it helps to have a audience of youngsters and those are the mixed audience here but youngsters young minds bright minds we have a lot of energy pouring in and we can save a lot of energy because we get a lot of illumination a lot of light and we can save probably some electricity also by a lot of light coming so as you would be aware of with um, with uh, Atma Priyananda ji's method whenever we interact is basically an interaction obviously it will be nearly a torch to have a two hour long talk so it will be an interaction obviously so whenever we interact it should be interaction within codes so you you need to interact unless it's a process it's a dialogue and what we are talking about here is life so unless we have questions i will be as good a bloke as i enter this hall and you would be as intelligent as you already were so we need to have some kind of interaction now professor mandal was telling me that we have a spiritual heritage circle going on here now so something interesting like heritage what is heritage i thought about that i was just thinking what is heritage a heritage is something which we get something probably which is very old something dilapidated because nowadays you know heritage committees have a fad to announce whatever is dilapidated and shattered and uh, just going to going in shambles immediately it's something heritage so are we talking about something of that sort here when we say heritage or and when we say heritage we are talking about history something which is old uh, something which belonged to my grandfather great grandfather etc interestingly i did some google and some etymology part and i saw that heritage has an origin of 13th century both from the latin and french and heritage means basically something which we can inherit which is fit to be worthy of inheriting inheritance now spiritual heritage spiritual roughly speaking is something which is not matter something which is not spirit physical so heritage then again is a in the strictly in, in the sense of the term heritage it's something good it's always something which we want to cherish something which is very nice like say the taj mahal and it doesn't have any evil or terrible aspect to it and that's why there is an ongoing discourse that heritage downplays history taj mahal when we say it's a heritage we essentially downplay the kind of invasion which goes behind the construction of taj mahal when we say heritage we downplay all the negative aspects of history we are only trying to cherish the positive aspects of history now you may all be wondering suddenly we have got into a history class or something like that why i am telling this is as far as india is concerned i doubt whether we can use this word heritage in the proper sense of the term because i see a heritage so to say where we worship kali the terrible we worship the evil we worship death alongside the worship of saraswati worship of splendor worship of knowledge worship of lakshmi so i don't think that indian heritage downplays history as such we don't undermine evil we, in our heritage in our legacy i would like to call it legacy in our legacy we have place both for the terrible and the beautiful because that's life you don't get one without the other so 
that's the legacy which has been handed over to us and when i say it has been handed over to us automatically a question arises have we really received it because living in the present now how is this whatever spiritual heritage relevant to my life how is this gita and blah 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 relevant to my life how is this all philosophy and all this tonsured head monks relevant to my life this is a big question i am in a in a life with lot of problems about problems i will come later so lot of problems lot of don't know what to do kind of situation crossroads cliche but crossroads and i am here standing in my life with so many turbulences and suddenly you come and tell me that i have been given a legacy where is this legacy nobody passed me any will there is no money coming into my bank account i mean that legacy is very palpable this legacy i am not able to understand where is this legacy what legacy are we talking about and if this legacy is not useful in my present day life sorry please i just quit and that's the practical attitude and that's how it should be but what is life all these questions are big questions so legacy or spiritual heritage will be relevant only when it is relevant to me today whatever i am doing if it is relevant to me to solve my problem but our problem is that we seldom have problems today our problem is that we do not have problems how is that suppose a person is admitted into a hospital into an intensive care unit say he is 75 cardiac patient the doctors give him plus or minus 5 days so what does the patient think that he will die no he thinks that he will somehow make it either not in india somehow he will go to the states or somewhere and he will get better treatment and somehow he will come out of the hospital because he has that marriage of his uh, grandson to attend so something is there you see hope he has hope lot of hope to live so we do not have problems this patient is not suffering actually apparently he is so many monitors and so many nurses on him and you say you are not suffering you have to be not here but in a loony bin but i'll say no he is not suffering he is not suffering this man is very happy he clings on to a hope which does not have any statistics as of now no parameters or no facts support his hope but he clings on to that hope he says yes i will live because i have that marriage to attend so he is not suffering who is suffering in this world are we suffering we have a lot of problems but are we actually troubled do we have problems in that sense of the term because when you have a trouble with your printer a laser printer or with your car or your refrigerator you start to troubleshoot and to troubleshoot you need a manual but if you don't have a trouble most of us we don't even open the manual i mean it comes with all the packaging and it lies in the box but once we have trouble we seek troubleshooting and we seek the manual but our problem is we do not have troubles religion or spirituality begins when trouble begins and trouble not externally but internally in your mind when you sense trouble when you perceive suffering when you understand when you become aware of suffering and remember believe me you need not be actually suffering to become aware of suffering you need not be actually in the midst of trouble to be troubled why you have this wonderful siddhartha prince siddhartha who was with all those luxuries 
very few people can afford even today and suddenly one day he sneaks out of his palace with his chariot in his chariot sees four scenes of a old man of a deceased man of a dead body and a monk and that's enough period he has nothing more to see he says okay i have to quit i have to go and seek a solution for this suffering but you never suffered he says no i have understood there is suffering in this world and i have to find out a solution for the suffering i have to find out a manual for troubleshooting this problem and that is exactly where spirituality begins that is when this heritage or legacy call it whatever you like becomes relevant to us today when we perceive suffering and that is why sankhya karika which is a primer on sankhya which is supposed to be the first philosophy of this country this eastern tradition it begins that perceiving three kinds of suffering i venture to find out a way to end all these sufferings that's how it begins i'll save you the sanskrit blah blah now so we need to suffer we need to be aware of suffering and that's why shofana said what he said was that today in this world uh, we when man actually is done with all the problems of external surroundings he becomes a problem unto himself he himself becomes a problem we see that today we have communications fast we have everything is settled but now we have psychological problems much we can't a small kid in the family can't adjust because something so many things were not purchased or so many uh, things were not provided to that child so we ourselves have become problems we can handle anything today but not ourselves the one thing which we can't handle today is ourselves we do not know how to handle in a relationship what we need is acceptance if somebody is going to reject me i'm going to commit suicide simple i can't stand rejection so we in a educational setup what i need is excellence if i am not going to be the excellent one then i am going to call it quits we do not have the energy the stamina or the courage or the mentality the mindset to hang on to continue to persevere because we ourselves have become problem we have never studied ourselves we have studied a hell of a lot of things but not ourselves we are not studies of ourselves coming to life what is life there are various definitions of life and uh, definitions do not help us but essentially as we see it life is a series of success and failures you succeed you fail you have joy you have sorrow so many things happening in our lives and there are two things in life one is as with any troubleshooting manual one is to fix a problem and the other one is how to maintain myself myself or ourselves or the mission i am talking about a printer or a car in such a way that i do not have any further problems how to maintain any equipment in such a way that i do not have any further troubles so that i need not go for troubleshooting any further that is another aspect so we have to fix up our problems fix our problems and we have to also maintain ourselves in such a way that we do not have any future problems so how do we do that for that we need to understand life we need to also understand that we have been given certain manuals like the bhagavad gita or the upanishads or the bible or the quran 
we have been given these wonderful manuals to troubleshoot and maintain ourselves and we have to do that now why because the best place where you should keep your computer manual is besides your computer the best place where you should keep your car manual is inside your car and the best place you should keep your refrigerator manual is near your refrigerator because if you are driving and suddenly something goes wrong then what do you do if you do not have the manual nearby so we need these manuals now when we are in the heat of the moment contrary to the popular perception that okay chalega baad mein pad lenge we will uh, okay spirituality okay we will read it afterwards geeta oh abhi to bahut kaam hai i have to like build up my career and i have to achieve so many things but you are wrong because these things will help you achieve them better these things will these manuals will actually help you fix your problems which you are now facing and what will happen if you read them post retirement you will only say aha isme aisi baatein bhi likhi hai i didn't know that otherwise i would have read them earlier oh so you see it's now that you are into so many relationships it's now that you are being rejected by some it's now that you are an uh, office setup you're working or you're an entrepreneur it's now that you're facing the problems and it's now that you need this troubleshooting manual and that is why this legacy becomes relevant to us today we have lot of wants all of us know basic roti kapda or makan food shelter and clothing and that's the primitive stage and though we have civilized ourselves so called civilization but still a major part of our time goes into these three factors of life the three wants of life food shelter and clothing and once you have got them you have something else probably you want love or you want learning or you want say fame you want power there are lot of things which you may need and our needs go on increasing then we may also want entertainment unfortunately the thing which comes almost last in our priority list will be religion or spirituality or putting it another way we do not want to we do not want to face ourselves the last thing we want is to look into ourselves the last thing we want is to see the garbage which is there inside our minds and there is a lot of garbage so this is how our wants are structured and when we start wanting something higher when we start wanting something now there is a whole school of thought which will say why you call the spirituality higher how do you say that that is higher what makes you say that is higher that is my perception exactly that's my perception that it is higher somehow i believe and that is how the indian tradition believes that this spirituality is the higher want higher desire and when you come to that a lot of questions come what is life what is the goal of life so depends on the person what is the goal of life we are talking about asking questions you see there are various kinds of questions you can ask what when how why who etc but the question which is a philosopher's question is why why a scientist pure science is not concerned with how very few are concerned with how most of them are concerned with why and it's the engineer the technical the technological man who or the technological person who will ask this question how so a philosophical question why why do i live 
why am I standing here in front of you and why are all of you sitting in front of me? Why is this building here? You can ask this question practically with regard to anything. And this is the question which Swami Vivekananda said that he was interested in. He said, what concerns me is not the house but the whys. I am bothered about whys. Why? And in the Upanishads you have a lot of questions starting with why. Why does the mind get attracted by the objects, external objects? When I see something served on my table, very delicious, why is that I can't resist my temptation though I know I have diabetes? Why is, and that's why doctors nowadays say, you eat whatever you want. Because that way you are happy, I am happy. <laughs> Otherwise, my bill also will reduce and you know, your medicine bill also will reduce. So, and you also can't take many things. So you eat whatever you want and come to me. I am there, don't worry. So that's how medical practice goes on. So why? Why does the mind get attracted? Keno Upanishad begins like that. Why is mind drawn by the objects of senses? Objects which can be perceived by the five senses. Why? There is another question. Which has led to civilization? Which has led to all the development we can think of? In Sanskrit, you will have to suffer this much Sanskrit. Tata Kim. What next? What next? This question is the question of the philosopher, of the scientist and also of the sage. What next? I have completed my graduation, what next? I have completed my post-graduation, what next? I have completed my doctor, doctoral thesis, what next? What next? I have understood the body, what next? I have understood the mind, next. See, this question is a question which is applicable to all all spheres of our lives. What next? And that is how Indian sages found out the reality. Again, there is a whole school of thought or schools of thought who will say, what is reality? There is no one reality. So, this is the perception of the Indian tradition because you see, you have to be politically correct many times. <laughs> Otherwise, you are going to be in trouble. So, this is the position of Indian tradition that there is a reality and that is the ultimate reality and there is only one reality which is also the position of Advaita Vedanta. So this reality was found out by the sages with the continuous questioning, continuous process of discovering the dialogue, interactive dialogue, we were talking about interaction. What next? Where did they begin? You would, you would be wonderstruck to under, know that they, they started with what most of us consider that let us freak out, enjoy. Indian stages, sages, they started this questioning exactly from there, from the enjoyment of senses. They did that and believe me, they did it very systematically. They wrote a lot of huge tomes, huge manuals with unbelievable logic which can like put down anybody, great intelligences, intellects and they prove that enjoyment is everything. They started there and then they found out that no, it was not everything. Then they came a little closer. They said, okay, if enjoyment is not everything, training the body is everything. Martial arts. Most of the martial arts or all the martial arts have been developed in East, Eastern religions. So martial arts, training the body. You train your body to perfect synchrony, perfect. India also has a martial art in Kerala, it's called Kalari Payattu. So there's a martial art. So you train your body. Every muscle is trained, toned. Then they found that no. That's also not the ultimate thing. Then they came a little closer. They came to the breathing thing. Breath. 
the trained vipassana meditation or many other kinds of meditation training breathing they did that then they said no and going on and on they understood that then they came to mind training the mind then they found that no this is also not the final thing in religion then they came out of this what we will call it as body mind complex they said there's something beyond this interestingly some neurologists neurosurgeons neuroscientists have also arrived at the same conclusion coming from a different channel of course not using upanishads or something but using the laboratory they have found out that body is not the locus of an individual 